Welcome, paranormal enthusiasts, to this week's episode of Creepin' It Real, here on the Coast to Coast Entertainment Network, where everyone comes for their paranormal fix. Real people, real stories, in real time. So glad you could join us for some ghostly gab. I'm your host, Eleanor Wagner. Hello, everyone. As always, I appreciate you hitting the subscribe tab, follow button, or show app on your podcast of choice. Everybody give a hello shout out to our Coast to Coast Techie, Crispy Bacon. He'll be working hard tonight to help us run smoothly. Giving you a heads up, we have our live viewer comments up for anyone who wants to ask a question, so feel free to do that. This week's guests are a team that is unique in that they normally wouldn't have met if it wasn't for the paranormal. We have two suburban moms and a young college student leading to their slogan, two moms, one dude, a testament to how the paranormal can bring people together and transcends age and walks of life. One's a clairvoyant and leads the team with his vibrant energy, and it's no surprise that he brings home spirits every now and again. Another documents their trips with photography and video, while another organizes and plans the trips. Please join me in welcoming Nicholas Santino, Jackie Schumann, and Renee Bush from the ex Spiribit Paranormal Team. Quite an unusual name. Want to explain what it means, Jackie? Yes, it's Latin for ex spirit or um, ghost, if you will. Um, I was just throwing something together and I figured why not choose Latin because that's usually what demonologists use to get rid of the spirits or demons from people. So um, that's what we came up with and it's stuck. Very catchy, very catchy. Good job. Who wants to tell the story of how you all met and came together as a team? I guess I will. All so, right, go for uh, it. <laughs> it was November 2020. <laughs> Um, I was leading a group at Penhurst, and um, it started off with a little bit rocky, very rocky group at first, and then these two show up. <laughs> okay, we got newcomers. All right, just come with me. So we're walking around, we're doing everything, and uh, we go to Mayflower, which is, you've been to Penhurst, you know where Mayflower is. Um, it goes mm -hmm. to the board. We're on the third floor, and we're all sitting in a circle, and Jackie and Renee are sitting across from me. I'm looking sitting this way at the door. And I say, we're all just going to go around our, and say our names in a circle. So we all do that. And through the spirit box, I hear closed mouth bitch. Oh. And I look and I'm talking <laughs> and I'm saying, what? Who, who did you say that to? And through the spirit box, we hear Jackie. Oh. It's <laughs> losing it. First time I ever heard my name come out First of that First time thing. she's ever yeah. heard her name. And I say, okay, so Where's Jackie? Because I know I, I know where she's at, but I can't really see her. Like, right. She's like, oh, I'm over here, and uh, I feel like I'm being kissed. And I well, wear. I said I, there was like saliva yeah. coming out. Of she's like, I feel like I'm being kissed. It, I'm like, it, it had a during, mask on. It, it was during, during COVID. COVID. Well, yeah. I was yeah. like, well, there are kids here, and yeah. are you both mothers? And there you go. Moms, and I said, okay, is there a spirit trying to you know connect with Jackie because she's a mom? And turns out, yeah, someone was. It was really Aww. <laughs> Yeah, William Fisher. He goes by Fisher. Um, he likes any woman who walks the earth. Um, so yeah, that's how we met. And um, and what was it? February twenty one. Y'all came back. Yeah, we came yeah, back for my birthday. For her birthday. For her birthday <laughs> then we had another private, and um, it was pretty dead and quiet that night because it was February and it was cold. But yeah. mm -hmm. so we cool. had some fun experiences, and ever since. Yeah, we kind of just made it a just, thing. Yeah. Just been us. I think um, people, the friends of Jackie on her Instagram were like, do you guys have a YouTube? Like, or, you know, this and that. And we're like, oh, maybe it's time we start our own page. So we're like, eh. Yeah. So we started April 2022. Yeah, we when we April, 21. Or, I'm sorry. April yeah, All the years are running together. Yeah. They do. They all kind of blend. It happens really quickly before you know it. And it's funny that you went back for your birthday because um, 2019, Feb it was February 22nd, 2019. 
I celebrated my birthday in the Sterling Hill Mines on an investigation. <laughs> so that's my ideal birthday present. Your birthday is in February too. It's a great month. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and Pisces are, are, are very um, intuitive too. So if you're a Pisces or a Capricorn. Um, I'm, I'm, a I'm a Pisces. Yeah, we're yeah. Aquarian. Aquarian. Mm -hmm. Very, very, the water, the water signs, they were all very, very sensitive. Well, I know your clairvoyant um, and leader is Nick. Yeah. Who does the documenting and who does the team organizing? I do the team organizing. I do the the documenting. Yeah. Yeah. Photography. One of her. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. One of the. I'll brag for her. Um, <laughs> we were at Penhurst, at Penhurst in May, and we were standing in the VIP line to meet Project Gear. And she snapped in all these photos of Alex um, Schroeder and he's standing there and he's like mumbling to Tanner and he's like, why is this lady taking photos of me? <laughs> about it. I was like, Renee, he's she definitely wasn't. talking about you. And this other person in line was like, yeah, he was definitely talking about her taking photos of him. The more I try to be discreet, the worse yeah. it gets. The worse so, it gets. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> We post them to our Instagram. She tags them in it. And Tanner shared them on his grid. Wow. That's so cool. Oh, her mark corner. So I'll back for her. <laughs> and if it wasn't for you taking the photo at Lizzie's last year, we would have never gotten our little visitor in the morning. Ah, oh, yeah. That's to come later. That's to come later. Yeah, yeah. That is a picture. Wow. Well, I love that you invite others to tag along on your investigations, too. I've done the same thing over the years with Outsiders, and it's often led to new team members joining the team or just people learning and growing from the experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're all about para unity and getting together with other teams. Like, we, we met up with the Paranormal Patch. Um, her name's Kaylee. She's awesome. Um, the Haunted Archives, we went to the Conjuring House with that team, too um we're always open to meeting new people i mean we're just i don't know we're just yeah. like a really friendly group and that's the know. way it should be i think we're open to hearing other people like other people's experiences mm -hmm. and you know just just see how they investigate them. yeah like just, you know to get a per different perspective on how they investigate like what technology they use and mm -hmm. interesting are they the equipment you learn new, new oh. things too a good way to learn new techniques and new uh equipment and that sort of thing yeah yeah are either of you girls sensitive like nick is or no you know late i feel like i was talking to our friend jenny lynn she works at penthouse as well um i was talking to her about this and i'm like i feel like the more i've been doing this the more i'm starting to pick up on things yeah like, the same thing she's been doing this over 10 years and she's like no you definitely will and Lately, I've been like knowing things without knowing how I know them. Not necessarily like on a paranormal investigation, but like things have just come to me, and I'm like, how do I yeah. Know this? Like for example, I don't know if you, like our viewers probably know this, but like in Chester County, we had Danilo Cavalcante, the the um the guy that got out of prison. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm giving an example of something that happened to me recently, I was at Target when I was at Target. I was shopping. We're going into day 14 of him on the loose, right? I hear in my voice, my, for whatever reason, it was my sister's voice saying they got him. And I'm like, I didn't think anything of it. I go to the bathroom. Obviously, I checked my phone in the bathroom. And I'm like, <laughs> I go on my phone and we got an alert from 911. We were getting reverse 911 calls because we're in the county. And it says he was caught. And I'm like, how did I know? Like, how did that happen? It was like within 10 minutes of me hearing my sister say they got him to that. So, like, weird things like that have been happening to me. And then... I like when we're on an investigation, all of a sudden, like, I'll just ask a question that I feel like they're, they they want me to, to ask. Asked. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the equipment starts going off. So I don't know what it's called, but I am starting to sense things. But well, they say like, that everybody has it. It's just how receptive and, and intuitive you are. And I have always said I'm not nearly as sensitive as some of the people on my team. But when we are together, that energy that you generate I, I find that I end up putting pieces of the puzzle together that I never even thought I could. I'd be like so excited all of a sudden, oh my God, I figured that out or I did that. And over time, it definitely grows and we definitely learn and develop whatever it is that we have yeah. to a better degree for sure. Yeah. I mean, we're all energy and 
like you said, it's like developing it, tapping into it, and being open to it, really. Yeah, you have to um, be open to it because, I mean, if you're not, then you shouldn't be, in the, the, point. You shouldn't be in the field. What's the point? No. <laughs> exactly. I know, like, backing up what you're saying, I feel like a lot of people think, okay, here's a haunted location. I'm just going to go run in there and I'm going to get all this stuff and I'm going to talk to all these spirits. Sometimes, you know, Penhurst 2021, February, oh my gosh, it, yes. we it went in there and it was silent. Maybe yeah. a door opening, that was it. St. Albans, for example. Nothing. Yeah. They market it. I'm not knocking them. It just but happens. It happens. so haunted. You go in there and it's, you get nothing. Yeah. I so feel like, like the alert. way a lot of these programs are presented to the public is they think that everything is, is haunted. And sometimes a paranormal investigation can be quite boring because you can go and have nothing happen. And then you can right. go and have a lot of things happen. It, it just it's a hit or miss really? or what the spirits are feeling that way. I find a lot of the time when I go to a place that's less traversed, we get more because it's less traversed yeah, yeah it makes yeah. sense so but i am really excited about the stuff that you guys brought because uh we're very similar in that we take pictures of mirrors and glass and i know there's a big argument about what what is and what isn't just like there's an argument over orbs and are they real or not mm -hmm. but i love finding stuff in mirrors and windows and it happens all the time and i there's no denying that it is something and i just can't wait to show the people today for example you guys went to the white hill mansion in new jersey and i'm going to give a picture credit to the white hill mansion website because i took a picture of the building off of the site to show everybody just to give them a little background while chris puts that picture up sitting atop a bluff overlooking the delaware river this gorgeous structure was purchased by robert field in 1722 Home to five families from that point on. The website states it went from a Lenape winter settlement to a hotbed of Revolutionary War activity to American inventors and innovators offering a unique snapshot of the long span of the state and its natural history. But, you know, it's an old place, so you assume that it's going to be haunted. But what makes this location unique to hauntings? What drew you guys to go there? Me, personally, I watched an episode of Ghost Hunters, and I said, okay, this is close to us, number one. It's about 45, 50 minutes stops. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, as soon as they walked in, they were getting activity. Mm -hmm. And that's a very rare occurrence for a location. And it happened with us. As soon as we walked in, we were getting activity. Mm. Like what? What happened? I was setting up equipment and my radios were going off. They were mm -hmm. kind of going off in weird Morse code. Um, my REM pod was going off. I walked in back in January and I heard to my left, which is the parlor, which used to be a restaurant, a very noisy, quiet restaurant, like, you know, closed door kind of restaurant. You're hearing a cold conversation, mm -hmm. and weird things. Um, what else? Smells of roses and perfumes and... Yeah, you I love that. I love when you can smell things. That's mm -hmm. crazy. We've smelled fire when there's been a fire in the building and we didn't know it. We've smelled, like you said, a woman's perfume, usually like roses or florally kind of scents. Mm -hmm. Soar smoke. It's very cool when you can smell it because it'd be like, oh my God, do you smell it? Or you were smelling it and you walk around and another team member goes, I smell a cigar. And I'm like, oh my God, I was just going to say that. So yeah, I, I, that's definitive proof for me for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I just like the fact that there were children there. Um, there's so much history to it. I think um, I'm trying to recall, the, like, there's definitely ties to like the Revolutionary War there. Yeah, I think there were like soldiers, like soldiers, camping out. Yeah. Soldiers there. It went through so many iterations over the years that you're like, there's a lot of history here. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we went there what twice in a twice. very short time span so we went in january of last year that was the first time january it was just, it was just the three of us that night and that was when we got i don't know which evidence you're gonna pull up first but that's when we got the walkie talkie thing yeah. that, that was, was crazy, crazy. Uh, well, tell us about the walkie talkie thing because i'm going to show them the picture of the mirror that's the one i want them to yeah. see but tell us about the walkie talkie thing yep. So we were in, I believe, the children's room. We're doing like an, an EVP session either with like an SP7 or a spirit box. And all of a sudden, like, Nick is like 
all of a sudden he starts like feeling like he's, he's getting, getting choked. choked. I got choked. <laughs> like and oh, he's, wow. and I could see like tears like welling up in his eyes. He's and yelling I'm, at like, me. And he, he stands up and he's got his hands around his neck and he's like, guys, I feel like and I'm like, I'm like, let go of him. I mean, like, who do you what am I yelling at? Like nobody's there. <laughs> Feels like he's being choked, and um, he's like Jackie. I'm being choked, and I'm like, I don't even know what to do. How do I, I know, stop like, this? how do we stop this? So you know, we just said, okay, let let him go, let him go, that kind of thing, and then it it stopped, and then you know he he you know kind of regained his composure a little bit and calmed down, and then it's like, all right, well, like we went to go get um our guide Erica, so Erica was kind of like um in a trailer like yeah off, off like a it's few like an feet offshoot. like an offshoot yeah. from the property mm -hmm. cutting through the children's room like you know it's one of those houses where a room leads into another mm -hmm. room into another room so it's very cut up so we're so we're leaving the children's room going into another room and i have the walk i'm the only one with a walkie the other walkie was downstairs on a table mine's on mine was in my pocket Her was, hers was in her pocket off and then all of a sudden you hear like something coming through and, and we're like, and I'm like, what? and we stop like dead in our tracks. And we're like, and I kind of look at these guys and, and all of a sudden it's like, we're staying here. Yeah. And we're like, we're recording. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, and then you'll, and then all of a sudden you hear help. And we're like, uh, and I got scared. Like I, we got scared because like, we thought like somebody trying to get in the house and somebody down. Like it, it was just the freaky thing. But then I'm like, yeah. Who on a Friday night at like ten o'clock is going to get on a in the middle of January? In the middle of January is going to get on a walkie talkie. And say, I, I the, cho know. the choking. Do you think it was a child trying to hug you tightly, or do you think it was somebody actually trying to choke you, or if it was you uh, a creeper in the building? But the creeper does stay up in the attic. Now I don't really know if it kind of goes out the house, but I do know that there are some you know dark. There's a dark energy in there. Um, He's not. He's not mean. He's mean. Let's put it that way. So I don't know if I was getting in touch with him, or if I was getting in touch with the child. But it was. It, it hurt. It definitely well, then it was probably intentional. Yeah, it hurt you like that. Can it? Well, look, the picture that Chris had up a little earlier. Can you put it back up again, Chris? This is the one that you was taken of the mirror. You said right. Yeah, yeah, so I um there's like a progression of photos where you see the like the normal and then that's zoomed in. So that's me and the left there. I'm wearing a okay. tan coat, a black um beanie, and I just thought to myself, oh, I'll just stand in this corner and at the end of the hall there's a mirror. And I'm like, let me just take a couple photos and see what comes up, you know, later. And behind me in that room it's nick and uh erica who works there they're over in the corner and then renee i'm not sure where i wasn't in there yeah you I weren't was in the like room in at all the room taking pictures and to of note again this was the night it was just the three of us and erica she was wearing black he was wearing black erica was wearing a gray hoodie but she was over in the corner so we we debunked this because we were like erica is that you and she she's like hair. yeah she goes she no hair. like i literally remember seeing you jackie taking that photo and i wasn't anywhere in the shot so yeah when you zoom in you see this i <laughs> mean um there were hessian soldiers that stayed there i believe or were, were camped or were camped out. there um, so I looked up, like, you know, what Hessian soldiers kind of, I mean, I don't know if that's the same thing. Again, it's kind of up for interpretation, right? Like, what you make of it. But I assure you that is an, sure. an original photo from my phone. It's still there. It's not us. Um, and then we went back a couple weeks later, and I stood in the same exact doorway, and took several photos, and tried to debunk them, like, zooming in, like, what else could it have been? There was nothing that could explain Yeah. That. Nothing. Like, hmm. Erica's That's interesting. Um, Erica, who works yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sure. she still is like, I don't know what that could have been. So, yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah, that was a cool place. That's probably like one of my favorite places to go. It's, it's small. It's, small, it's not it's a far small. drive. You know, if if you go, like you know, you, you kind of you, you do. Yeah, you do. But um. You know, you kind of want to be in a small group when you go because, I mean, you know, old houses, they travels. creak and crack and sound travels. Like, even if you're up in the attic, you can still hear. Yeah. Well, it's the, in the basement floor. or the, the speakeasy. Yeah. It used to be the speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. And then. Well, um, I know Nick worked at Penhurst. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, you're fine. I, I was getting ready to say that I know that you worked at Pennhurst, but you also went there to do an investigation. That's the asylum in Spring City for those who are listening. It's in Pennsylvania. And I have a picture of it that Chris is going to put up and give picture credit to the Pennhurst website. Just for the viewers to know, Pennhurst Asylum was previously known as the Eastern Pennsylvania State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic. and was opened on November 23rd, 1908. And it had 79 years of operations and hundreds of allegations of abuse and neglect of patients, um, many of whom were mentally or physically disabled. In 1987, Pennhurst officially closed its doors due to the lack of funding, overcrowding, and patient abuse. It was left to the vandals for 23 years until it was bought and turned into a haunted attraction in 2010 and renamed to what it's more commonly known as Pennhurst Asylum. And as we discussed earlier, it's massive. With its sordid history, there's no doubt this location is a perfect subject for hauntings. I know that when we were there, we experienced a, a creeper kind of dark shadow. Nick, I don't know if you've seen it down in the tunnels. We are very well acquainted. Yeah, and it, it it was walking toward us, and we were getting it on the video, and all of us were just like, "Oh my God, it's really there!" Like we just could not believe that it was so massive, and that we were getting it, it on film. Uh, it's very active over there for sure, and you got some great stuff too. I mean, tell us a little bit about what happened while you were there. All right, um, <laughs> where, where do we start? You <laughs> You know, um, I know it's hard to pick, right? Um, I let's see. We talked about uh, oh, our yeah, friend. we we have to. I mean, that was probably the one time I was like, maybe I don't want to do this anymore. I've never seen her <laughs> so scared. Yeah. Oh, really? Myself, Jackie. I wasn't there. Um, I, I couldn't yeah. go. Yeah. Our friend Jenny Lynn, our, our other friend Jen, and then two others with us. Um, we were standing in the Devon basement, the Candyland, and our friend Jenny has a geoport, which is a, an amplified spirit box. Essentially, it's like a guitar like app, a and you yeah. hook up the um, spirit box in the back of it. It's just louder spirit box, and we're communicating through something. And I'm looking up, and I'm and I'm saying to Jen, I said, "There's something in here that's that's not it, it ain't human. Some something, yeah, you something's were. wrong. With the energy shift." I said, "It's coming in, and it's going around us, and it's going out." Like you could feel a breeze. And my like, and I said, "And mind you, birds don't fly at night." Mm. And the entire energy just shifted, and all of a sudden, the screams start coming through the box. It's these screams that we've never heard before. It's these yelling and it's this weird up and down boop, boop, boop between that and then it's screaming. It's just like, yeah. And it went on for four, four minutes. Four solid. minutes long. Yeah. yeah. It's stopped. It doesn't stop. I jokingly say, buy myself to the foot of the cross, go back to hell wherever you came from. <laughs> oh, no. And he says, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus Christ, Christ, I can tell you to stop. It stops. And I said, all right, let's give it a second. It stop. And it's, it's, you're still feeling the energy. And we turn it back on, and it does the screams again. Mm. And then through that as well, it says, rip its heart out. Yeah, and then we came back on, somebody else had like an Oculus app. Obvious. It said stuff about heart, and I freaked out because he condition. has a heart condition, and I'm like, is this thing trying to get to you? It's trying to get to me, and it's saying, rip its heart out. She grabs on to me. I know, I'm like, that's the whole thing, like, Nick. In sheer <laughs> fright, yeah. and I'm just, I'm silently praying to myself, and it's screaming, and it's yelling, and I said, all right, it's gone. Set it off, it's gone. I want to get out of here. We have to get out of this location. And then it was silent for the rest of the night. About two weeks later, I go back to Penhurst. And it's just myself and my friend Jenny Lynn. And she was doing a live in Rockwell Tunnel. I gave her a hug. I said, good luck. You know, I love you, blah, blah, blah. If you need me, I'll be here. All right. I'm just sitting down Mayflower. She's on the opposite side of campus. And it's 7 o'clock at night. Her live is supposed to only go until 9. 
I'm looking. All right. It's 930 now. What's happening? Okay. I can't get in touch with her. Phone call doesn't work. I try yelling her name. She could probably hear me, but, you know, nothing. I try texting. A text won't go through. I text my friend. And I'm like, listen, I don't feel comfortable. Can you just come over? I know you're at over at maintenance. Just drive over with me. And just hang out here with me for a minute. Something's off. So we go into Mayflower together, and I turn the REM pod on. And we just start talking, and I start talking about demons. And I'm like, is there really a demon here? I don't really believe it. You know, I never witnessed it, but I did witness some weird shit last week. And she's like, oh, yeah, it goes by Dave. And as soon as she said Dave, the REM pod goes off. But it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It stays at a pitch. I said, okay, interesting. We go to the second floor. We start mentioning him again. It goes higher. We go to the third floor. It goes extremely high to the point where it's like, okay, this is not normal. This REM pod activity that we're experiencing, it's not normal. Let's get out of here. Let's go find Jenny. The long story short, we drive down the Rockwell Tunnel, and I just whisper, hey, Jenny, where are you at? She hits me back with who the fuck you talking to. Oh. And I run down to Rockwell, and I'm like, whoa, 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 what, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? She's like, I don't know, but I'm up here. I'm looking at you all from up here, and you're down here. I got to get out. So I grab her, and we start running out of Rockwell, and she starts, I'm going to throw up. She starts shaking. You know, she's getting really shaky. Like, I, I got to throw up. She throws up a little bit, and then she's good. Now, Jenny is the type of girl to kill a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> She's, she's, uh, she's, 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 so this is abnormal. This is not normal. She turns to me and I said, why don't you get in the car with us? I'm fine. I can walk back myself. <laughs> I said, okay, this is not you, Jen. I don't know what this is, but this is not you. And you just get in the car with us. No, I'm fine. I'm going to walk back. I'm fine. She tells me that she felt something come from above her, through her equipment, and out of her. Mm. And then she starts screaming, and she is yelling, and we're hearing her yelling, and she's convulsing, and she's laughing, and she's oh my God, oh, that's crazy. <gasps> oh, that's crazy. And then she throws up. She throws up black liquid. She throws up white liquid, and she throws up this small little bird thing. I think he, that's what you could see. That's what I saw. Like clairvoyant. Clairvoyant. <laughs> it was a bird. She physically didn't yeah. throw up a bird. It was just what I saw was a bird. Mm -hmm. and it just flies away but then oh. I see like two elevator doors opening and closing and the tenders, pristine, beautiful there's nurses, there's the fountain, there's the children there's kids touching her is she one of us, what's going on, what's going on is she one of us, is she one of us what's happening and I'm like, I don't know what to do here this is not her I tried filming it, not letting me I tried calling people, doesn't let me I could not get in touch with her. And she's saying to me, this night was supposed to be for you. And in between that, she's laughing and she's throwing up and she's shaking and she's screaming. And I say, Jen, you got to sit in the chair. You're going to you're gonna fall. Like, there's glass. I need you to sit. I don't want your chair. Okay. All right, fine. Just sit down. I start throwing holy water on her. She starts screaming and yelling. Yell she's screaming. I'm like, okay, with this... This is poltergeist. Or is this mm. I don't know what it was. I'm leaning more towards poltergeist activity now. I start praying, and then she finally just goes, oh, what ha what happened? And she's shaking back and forth and she's pointing in the, the rock I'm like, you're not going over there. She's like, but I have to. I'm like, you're not going over there. I'm getting you out of here. You're not coming back. For mm. a, a, a little while. Goes back to the night. Her tongue turned black. One of her, mm. I, think, I think her tongue turned black, or another guy's tongue turned black. Um, something she encountered, something that night that I don't know if we, if it kind of, you know, came out from us, I, from the yelling. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to but, say, but mm. what I experienced there, I just said, to, I, I said to myself, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to go back for at least a year. I can't, I can't do it. I'm not going back. And in March of 2022, I was gone back. And I said, okay. <laughs> at least it. I said, yeah. we're going you felt that, Then you felt it was safer to go back at that point. It was safer. 
and then it just kind of happened again. It was just, you know, dark energy and the creepers. I was followed by all from on the catwalk from a creeper that looked like a spider. It looks like a spider. Well, the figure, the figure that you got in the picture that Chris is going to put up. Do you think that that's the creeper, or do you think it's a spirit? If Chris, can you put that up uh, for them? So Renee oh, actually Renee took this one. photo in February of twenty one. Um, yeah. Now, if you zoom, if you go all the way, yeah. so it's actually like where that door is with the graffiti on it. It's in the glass. Like there's a figure. That's, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, the figure. Now I enhanced this. Like so, we went what Friday? Yeah. Um, that night, and I ended up. I was like, oh, like this is Saturday night at like ten o'clock at night. I'm sitting up in bed watching TV. I'm like, oh, let me pull out some pictures, see if like I can see anything. And I pulled up this one, I threw it into like a photo enhancing app. And uh, I just like turned, you know, brought the exposure up a little bit just to see if I could. And sure enough, I'm like, holy crap. Like, and that was the night it was like dead as a doornail. Like, yeah, no, dead. it was very quiet. Um, the nights you think you don't get anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Then you go back and you're just like, oh shit, they were there the whole time. <laughs> you know, when you look, when you bring that up, you can see like a definitive figure. Well, even from this distance, I could see it. Yeah. You know, like, I, I can see it. And um, there was the other one, too. Chris will put it up for us that, that you circled. I think you, you have it in, like, blue circle. Chris is going to put it up for us now. Um, but you can tell it's there's a figure there also, which is kind of cool. But the thing is, you, you take, like, 40, 50 pictures, and you got to sit there and actually look. You can see that there's something there. I, I love that. Um, uh, you you know Devin Building, Ellen. You know Devin? Yeah. All right, so this is when you walk into Devon on, um, it's, when you walk, it's the second floor, and you walk to the right. It's the day rooms back there. Um, and I was just like, you know, there's something in this room. I just know there is. And I lay on the floor, and I put my phone behind me, and I said, all right, smile. Smile for the picture. And in the third picture, mm -hmm. there's that. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. When you kind of feel something going on, and you sit there, and you just yeah. sit around the picture. Is that, you know, is that a chair? Is that maybe like, you know, I don't know, like, like a, an old poster that's hanging off the back of a chair? Because they do have posters up when patients were up living. No, nothing. Nothing was in that room. That's a nurse's station. Like, huh. Okay. We all definitely had experiences in that place. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm amazed that some people just walk through there by themselves. <laughs> I always had to have somebody with me. One person I'm fine with that I could not go by myself. I think I freak out. I used to. Yeah. places I can, but there I could not. Up oh the God. buildings, and I would say, well, listen, I know you're in here, and I know you're trying to scare me, so do it now, or else, you know, just do it now. And things, so I've, been, I've had rocks thrown at me. I've had shuffling behind me. I've had bare foot mm. behind me. The first fun. night we met you in Devon in that mm -hmm. day area, I'll never, I mean, this was like my second paranormal investigation in my life. That was her like, first one. It was like off the hook. You could hear a little girl humming. Yeah, she was just. Uh, we, we, in, scales. we were like sitting in a circle, lights out. Yeah. The only light that coming in is like the moonlight. Mm -hmm. um, we're all quiet. And then you just hear like, mm -hmm. it was like. Mm -hmm. And, oh, oh. and I'm like, what? I'm like, where is this coming yeah, from? Yeah, right and here? you know, everybody heard it, and it was just like coming from like all directions. Like, it was like oh, sad. Crazy. It was, I don't know. It made me sad. It was sad, but to me, it was comforting because it was like beautiful. I don't know. It was sad. Yeah. It was creepy. It was beautiful. It was like all these different like things that like emotions. Like, all these different emotions. And so like you know, it made me think like. I hope this child is in a better place. And I know yeah. people listening and watching her skeptics, like my husband at home. Hi, hi. Uh, <laughs> we're all crazy. Yeah. You're just hearing, you're imagining this. But here's what, here's what makes it different. Everyone else is hearing the same. Thing, right. Right. And it's not just yeah. one person here. Am I? It's my husband. Husband. You, you could, you'd be hearing it and you don't say anything. And then the person across my the room says, you husband. hear that? And then you're like, what do you hear? Humming. Oh my God! I love that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like my husband's like, oh, it's, they probably just had a stereo in there with that. And no, no, honey, they did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have one of those at home too. Oh, yeah. 
but we also <laughs> until something happens to him, then he's like. <laughs> that's the thing, Eleanor. Like I, you know, I, there's people out there who probably think we're all crazy, and it's like you know what? You can believe what you want to believe, but unless you are there witnessing it, you and you experience it. it. Not, it's like, it's not real. Yeah. you can't. Or if you're a sensitive, if you're sensitive, it's even harder then. Right, and right. I just tell everybody, I'm not out to convince anybody. You can believe me or not. This is what happens when I'm there and I can tell you the story and you can think of it as just a haunting story. I'm trying to scare you or believe it. I really don't care. I'm just sharing, you know, because there's, there's no convincing people that don't want to believe so. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a very personal journey, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When I tell, like, when I talk about it to people, like my neighbors or like people at work, like they're they're kind of like they're wow. intrigued. They are yeah. intrigued, but they're like, I could never do that. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know. And it's like, hey, yeah. it's for everybody. You know. Yeah. A lot of these places we go to, they have like a very dark and depressing history. They're very sad. The things that oh, were like like You know. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, which oh, we're going to put up next. Chris can put that picture up, too. That in itself has a history, too. PC credit to John Testa, who took this picture. Um, the Trans Allegheny Lunatic, Lunatic Asylum, constructed between 1858 and 1881, is the largest hand cut stone masonry building in North America and is purportedly the second largest in the world next to the Kremlin. Enormous. It was designed by the renowned architect Richard Andrews following the Kirkbride plan, which called for long rambling wings arranged in a staggered formation. I mean, it, it very, it, it's very daunting for sure. Um, but the original hospital designed to house 250 souls was open to patients in 1864 and reached its peak in the 50s with 2,400 patients in overcrowded mm -hmm. and generally poor conditions. So no surprise there that this place is haunted. And I'm sure you guys experienced just as crazy stuff when you were there as you did when you were at Penhurst. Yeah, oh, um, the best. Oh, the well, here's here's a fun fact about tra the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Um, it six, sits on 666 acres and 13 and buildings. 13 13 buildings. buildings. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. 666, you said? I don't like that yeah. number. <laughs> she doesn't like that number? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, every hour there is this loud alarm that goes no, off. No, I think it was just at one. Really? No, it was just at one point. Yeah, there was a loud alarm that goes off. Um, yeah, a, it was like 10, alarm. 11 o'clock at night, but um, the bats. Oh my God. Can we talk about the bats? Let's talk about the bats. Let's talk about the bats. Not only is that creepy looking, right? But when you're in there, like the bats come, they this clip your hair. hair. They, clip your, they hair. clip your hair. It's awful. The bats. Whew. Yeah, that was. Do um, they really? They, they come that close to you? Yes. yes. And it's on like every floor. I mean, like, like the ceilings are low. Yeah. Let's put it that way. The oh. Ceiling, they kind of go up and down. It's. They're, they're um, ramps almost. Yeah. And so the, pic the picture with the fern in it, is that from Trans Allegheny? Yes. 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 That so I you know, it's actually decent inside the building at some spots because I, I, I've i never been there. So I pictured it to kind of look like Penhurst, which is falling um, apart. Areas common areas it's are very beautiful. pretty. It's very um, well preserved. The floors are beautiful. There's four floors, right? Four floors. Four yes. floors. Um, and we did an overnight public. Um, but we luckily we're like able to be in our own group and basically you're there from what 9 p.m. to 5 we made it till 5 a.m. Yeah, that night. it was like sure. two hours. Good for you. <laughs> two <laughs> hours of two hours of floor. Um, so you kind of like have to stay if you want to see all the floors. So right. that photo I think that you're about to show next, that was about I think on my phone my timestamp is like 3 30 a.m. I was so delirious. Me too. Point. Yeah. Um, we were standing in this audit. It was like an old auditorium. I forget which floor. I feel like it was like a woman's wing. Woman's wing, I think. We're all facing this giant auditorium, and our guide AJ was talking to us about What's up, it. AJ? Um, and I mean, again, I'm I'm tired, and all I just and like like I said to you, I don't normally feel things or sense things, but it was one of those moments where I'm like, I think something's behind me. And yeah, so I turn around and as you can see, like, I think that's like AJ's elbow, like he's facing the other direction. I turn around and something just tells me to take a photo. And 
I could see the mist. That's why I took it. I could see the mist with my own eyes. And I'm like, I don't really know what I'm looking at, but I'm just going to take a photo. Didn't look at it until the next morning. And I'm like, guys, what the heck is this? All right. So you tell me, what do you see? Because I want to tell you what I see. What do you see? So it's kind of grainy. I'm not sure if, like, it's kind of grainy on here. But um, when you look, you see this white mist that's opaque enough to, like, black out the wood there. And you can see elbows. You can see legs. And um, there's it's like a man wearing, like, a tank top. That's kind of what yeah. I see. Yeah. I see a female from... On, on one side, I see the man that you're talking about, but I also see a female and I've seen this before where you get a visual of spirits in different sizes, almost, almost like you're watching a, um, a screen, like a movie screen and you get this full vision of it. I see a woman like, uh, that's a stunned woman. And if you, Look at it from a distance. Like I'm looking at it from here. I see the figure of the male, but I also see a woman. Yeah, and she is in the, in the lower left hand well, corner. I never saw that before. That's and, that, and that ends up happening a lot of the time. Is you'll see somebody else will see something and they'll point it and you're like, oh my god, I didn't realize that there is another one right there. But I do see the male, but I see this female, but she's on a larger scope. Like she's. Yeah, you see more of her face. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she looks like she's from like the forties or the fifties. Like she's kind of got that curly type of uh, short haircut. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The, the, where the, you can see the wood to the door frame. I mean, I mm -hmm. see that being blocked out by some kind of mist. Mm -hmm. And I did send this to AJ, our guide, you know, after we bought, like, you know, a couple of days later and I said to him, I'm like, hey, can you help me debunk this? Like, is there a light source coming from that hallway? And he sent it to the Tala, like, group chat or whatever. And he's like, we can't figure out what that is. Like, there's no light down there. So, I don't, again, it's, it's for what, you know, depending on, it's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? Like, I know what I saw that night and what right. made me take a photo and what I felt. Right, you felt something that made you take a picture, so there was a reason for that. Be mm -hmm. like, what is going on? You know, yeah. like there's something watching me. You know, um, yeah. I think that's just really cool because I don't nor I don't you know have clairvoyance. I don't really, but we are beings that can sense these things, and that's what I got. So it's good that you trusted your gut, though, when you. Yeah. trusted that feeling to say take a picture take a picture because then you get good catches that way yeah. the lizzie borden house when you guys went oh my gosh you you got some really really cool stuff from there it's in fall river massachusetts for the people that are tuning in and i used the picture that you guys took because i think you're on you're on the front stoop of the house um in the photograph and i love that picture so i i sent that to chris and he can put that up in a minute um I mean, all you have to do is mention the name, name Lizzie Borden and you know the story. I mean, I remember growing up and remembering the song Lizzie Borden took an axe, gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. Though I don't know how true the number of wax mentioned in the song is to the real murder. It's just this very ghastly and gory history to uh, Lizzie Borden. But no matter how it goes, the location is one to a well-known and grisly murder that Lizzie Borden was accused and acquitted for back in 1892. The story is bizarre, no doubt, especially in that she and her sister used their inheritance to build and live in a home. I think, uh, Nick, you said it's called Maplecroft, right? Yes, it is. It's called Maplecroft. And, um, uh, and they moved there. It's the high end of town. And then at some point in time, she and her sister had a falling out. And her sister left the home, leaving Lizzie to live and die alone. And I know people speculate about what transpired between them enough to make her sister leave like that. Did she confess after all? And I know many people wonder. I've spoken to many investigators over the years who've been to the Lizzie Borden house, and it's never disappointed. <laughs> Talk to me. Tell me what happened. Well, okay. So yeah. I have been invested in this case since I was six years old. Yeah. I'm 23 now. Um and I have always just felt a very, very strong connection to Lizzie. I've always felt she didn't do it. She was framed. She's told me I have. I don't. I haven't done this. This is not me. Um, 
I'll get into my belief and my theory in a little while, but mm -hmm. um, 2008 was the first time I went up there and it was August 6th, 2008. So it was two days after the murder. And I had to correct a tour guide. This guy shows a picture of Sarah, which is Liz's birth mother. And he says, mm -hmm. this is Mrs. Boyer. I said, no, 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 no. No, she, she didn't. That's, that's not who was murdered. Abby was murdered. You have the wrong information. <laughs> And kind of just since 2008, I, it's been a yearly thing where I go up there. I had, I've had my 14th, 15th, and 16th birthday there. Um, I took them last mm -hmm. summer for the first time. Yeah, that was the picture. That was the picture. Yeah. Um, I've had Lizzie say happy birthday in my ear. I've had a woman uh, of some of the boys back. I've ran into Andrew Borden himself at both times when he's a young man, when he, you know, had an apprenticeship building the home and when he's bloody. And it's creepy waking up to a man mm -hmm. on the back staircase saying, what are you doing back in my home? Do you think it has something to do with past life? I 100% I do. I've actually been told. Because I, I know that these connections people have to certain things. Like my daughter is really connected to the Native Americans and, and the, the woods and I'm telling her it's a past life, just like I'm connected to the Victorian era. I mean, we have many past lives, but there are some that just resonate in our minds and we're drawn to them. And that could be a you know, reason for like, the Lizzie Gordon house. What are the, what are the mediums? Mm -hmm. Three mediums tell me uh, you, you grew up with her. You knew her. You knew you. You were six years old and, you know, she would come out the front door, give you a hug. Maybe peppermint, um, peppermint a? and true, I true That's interesting. Use, and oh, uh, I do too. I do too. I mean, why else would I be so drawn to that location? Exactly. I go there, I get something, and it's nothing to do with everybody thinks, oh, there was rape and there is all, all this molestation about them. No, it, it, it's a theory. But the way I look at it, if Andrew Borden were to have raped his own daughters, I don't think he would have, you know, put crown molding in Lizzie's bedroom. He would not have sent over his money to Europe when she ran out of money in 1890, when she went on the grand tour of Europe. If, you know, this man's doing all these evil things to his daughters. Why is he sending her money? He's, what do you think uh, framed her? Why? Um, I truly believe her uncle, John Morse, murdered both Andrew and Abby at 9 o'clock in the morning. Everybody thinks Abby was murdered at 9 a.m., Andrew's murdered at 11. I think they were both murdered at 9 a.m. Um, Andrew was just murdered in the sitting room with windows open, so sunbeam is hitting the wounds, meaning it's going to be dripping blood. He's still going to be warm. Abby was murdered upstairs in a small, dark, congealed area. So her, her blood's going to congeal faster. The curtains are shut. Uh, uh, shutters are shut. Every it's she's murdered in a cold, dark room. Andrew's murdered in a hot room. What was that? What was the motive? What was his motive, though? Money, I believe money. Truly, definitely, hundred percent money. Everyone thinks you know the whole. Oh, she was raped. She was abused. There was. What, what about the blood? It was menstrual blood. It was on a period of the week of the murders. And Andrew, being Andrew, I'm not buying you a tampon. I'm not buying you a pad. Just have a rag up there. Burn your clothing. That's kind of what what they did, you know. Burn your clothing. She burned a dress um, two days after the murder. But it's also custom practice to burn soiled clothing. So yeah, I believe that Uncle John did murder both Andrew and Abby, and Lizzie just sounded the alarm. Yeah. You got this picture. Um... In the parlor, and I think you said it, it's at Maplecroft. Chris is going to put up the picture. Tell us what's going on here. Well, that, what picture, is that picture was actually taken at Maplecroft um, 2021. And I, this was the last time that the house was open to the public um, before it was sold to be a private residence last year. And it, I just went up to one of the windows and I said, you know, I love you. I've always loved you. You were framed. I'm sorry. If you want to take a picture, I don't know how long I'll be back. Smile for my picture. And I just put my phone up to one of the windows that looks into Maple Crawl. And I caught that photo. And uh, so you think this is her? This is a picture of her? Elizabeth, yeah. Um, if you kind of look over, she's kind of sitting on a chair. And uh -huh. 
Originally, I thought she's reading a book. I'm 90% positive that she has her dog, Laddie Miller, with her. Mm -hmm. Three Boston Terriers. So it, it's some kind of terrier, schnauzer looking animal with her. Do you kind of see it? A little bit. Yeah, I, I actually thought that there was a um, a dog or a cat on yeah. her lap. And I know that she was very animal. She was an animal lover. She's very animal oriented. She yes. left a lot of money to the rescues, I think, right? She did. She founded the Fall River Animal Rescue League, and it's still mm -hmm. still operating today. Um, this is a cool, cool picture. Oh my gosh, it was just crazy cool. I mean, last what, what was it last year, right? And yeah, you know, I think you year. asked um, how long have you known him, and over the spirit box, it said a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, hmm. She comes home. through every now. She and comes then. through every now and then. She will, and yeah. she'll she'll just come through. And my voice will change, and I'm like, okay, so you're coming through to me instead of Fall River. It'll be Fall River. I'm like, all right, what are you doing? <laughs> why, why, why? <laughs> that's that's actually the really cool part of that place. Is like when she comes to the like there is an accent. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. She has the, the, yeah. the. They still have that accent, and. Um, mm. Bridget Sullivan, their Irish domestic, uh, you know, maid, you'll smell food at three o'clock in the morning. And historically, Bridget would have to wake up around 4 a.m. to get everything to start, you know, start cooking and start fire. And why am I smelling? Remember last year? Remember that when you're smelling stew or something? Mm. Was that, was that I think, yeah. Yeah. I love this one in the window. Yeah. You can definitely see the figure in the window. Yeah, that yeah. picture is taken in the guest room. Um, that's where Mrs. Gordon was found. But that's where John Morse. That's also where yeah. John Morse slept. Was um, sleeping, yeah. And there's nothing like there's no window units. There's nothing blocking no. that window because we've all well, been, been there. In there. Yeah, yeah. Now, who do you think this is? I believe that's Emma Gordon. Um, around twelve or thirteen. She did go away for a little while. She went to Wheaton Se uh, Seminary. It's an, it was an all-girls school. You know, she just went away. Um, and there's a picture of Emma. I think I sent it to you as well. And she has her hand above it. She's in a beautiful gown. And she has bangles on one hand, a bracelet on the other hand. And she's just staring directly into the camera. Mm -hmm. Sad face. Um, I believe that is Emma at 12 or 13 years old. Before. You know what you should, you should do? You should do like a dual shot like you did with the next photo of um, the dad, uh, Lizzie's dad, because that's a great catch. And Chris can put that up. That, How you that, did the dual, the dual. Like you can tell that, that that's him. That you could tell. Mm -hmm. him. And yeah. uh, you should do that with um, Emma too right. on that window. What's interesting about that window shot is we were on Instagram. There's another team. They took a photo of them. Out, yeah. like out on the corner. Out on the corner. Uh, and across, they the saw the same thing in that same really? window. And I remember commenting. I'm like, oh my gosh, we yeah. got something in that same exact window. And I know people are thinking, well, there's got to be something in the window sitting. But it's like no. we've been in. There's, there's nothing. Not. He knows enough people that work there. We've asked I, them. And I and know like, when they go and clean the home. We were the yeah, last yeah. in that house. Yeah. And I just said, why don't we get a team picture? When they ran across the street, she set her, pod, her tripod yeah. up. And... I, I just said, I, I remember just saying a smile. That's yeah. it. Huh. Yeah. Now, how did you get the picture of the dad? How did you get this photo? I took that picture um, in 2021, and it was uh, me and an, an old friend of mine. We luckily, you know, um, we, we lucked out. And she said, is there anybody staying at the house tonight? And the store guy was like, no, it's, it's just you two. Everybody canceled. So you have free room of the entire home. No. <laughs> and I said, luck is not going to be needed. Mm -hmm. uh, she was upstairs. I was just downstairs. She was passed out. And I said, you know what? This is a very quiet night. I'm just going to start taking pictures. And Mr. Gordon, where are you at? Now, the new owner, he did change a lot of things. I was friends with the previous owner. The previous owner had um, doorknobs, historically doorknobs on the doors. I'm guessing Andrew was upset that his locks were thrown away. Oh. The doors were unlocking and locking. And I said, all right, I'm just going to take a picture of you. And I stood on the steps on the staircase and I looked into the parlor and I just took that picture. And I said, okay, you're in there. Oh, cool. I just blew it up, put it side by side, and I enhanced that. And I said, all right, you got 
tantrum. So that's that. Thing. That's how you knew that you got to Yeah, I had an experience. experience. Um, okay. Yeah, so I stayed in Lizzie's bed or in her bedroom. Well, in her bed, yeah. And it's the original bed frame, right? There's no yeah. bed frame. So I wasn't, I had had surgery just a couple weeks prior, so I wasn't feeling well. So I, I was in the bedroom by myself while they were at dinner. He walked me back from dinner and I was like, I, I, I don't even care that I'm alone at this house. I'm just, I need to lay down. So at some point they came back, Renee comes up to the room and we share. So in Lizzie's bedroom, there's like Emma's a, room is Emma's right room to is the right. left. Yeah. So as soon as you walk in, you're, you're seeing like Lizzie's bed directly in front of you. You immediately turn left and then there's a door that goes into Emma's bedroom. And that's where I slept. Yeah. So she came up, got something, something out of her room and I shut the door. Like, you know, old yeah. doors, you have to like pull them. Latch. So I remember pulling it and it was like, like I could feel it. Like it was like giving I'm like, ah, it's one of these. So I pulled it shut and like tight. And then I just like, Turn the knob back and I could hear it like latch. I remember hearing, because I'm in the bed, she's basically leaving the bedroom. And I remember hearing her pull the door to test it to make sure it was open. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes go by and I hear the door knob turn, the door pops open. I sat up and I'm like, oh, Renee? And we there's were, no one and there. We were in the guest room. Okay. We were in the guest room doing a spirit box session with the door shut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just froze and I'm like, okay. I'm not getting out of this bed. Yeah. So yeah. then, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, she comes back up and I go, Renee, did, did you come back up here and try to come in the room? Yeah. No. I'm like, look at the door. And she's like, I know I shut this door. And I'm like, I didn't <laughs> go <to my> bed. <laughs> like, yeah. First yeah. time that ever happened to me. It was nuts. And then my experience yeah. was, so when we arrived, mm -hmm. um, a tour was going on. Uh, Louise was giving a tour. Um, so we kind of just like, you know, meandered like through and we were kind of just snake your way through the house. Yeah. So we started going upstairs and they go into the guest, you know, the group goes into the guest bedroom and I kind of just like dipped out and I'm in the hallway. So I'm like right outside the guest bedroom taking pictures like directly into Liz's room. And I don't know. <laughs> it's, it was just kind of weird. Like I just saw like, um, like a figure go by. So quickly, like if you ever saw the movie Beetlejuice, the scene where Otho and Delia were walking up the stairs and they're getting ready to like, you know, destroy the house. And she's like, oh my gosh, she's like, look at this place. It's like a giant ant farm. And then all of a sudden, like you see Barbara go by like really quickly. And Otho's kind of like, what? It was exactly like that. It was so quick. You're kind of like, she stopped the whole tour. I was, she like, was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I kind of just looked over and Louise is like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm sorry. Because I didn't want to interrupt yeah. your tour. So yeah. I'm just like, guys, can, can, can you come here mm -hmm. really quick? Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yes, I saw it was a white dress and dark hair pinned up. And it went into, it was like in Lizzie's room. No, no, no it, it was, was in the, the room. room. It was in the parents' room. So again, it's in the back. Um, you go through Lizzie's yeah. room to get to the parents' room. And then there's a bathroom, and then there was what um, a pantry. It used to be it a used pantry. Used to be a pantry. And when they, the, yeah, they when, when Andrew, they, the tenant. So people, uh, the house was built for a South Yard Miller, and when Andrew had the apprenticeship in the building, he said, "Okay, I don't, I'm gonna knock everything out." You know, it was originally a, an apartment. You know, so he turned it into a, a single family home. So that's why rooms go to room to room, and every door was locked. You know, you couldn't, Andrew couldn't access the front stairs. He had no reason to, since the room was in the back. But when and the Andrew's room used to be the kitchen of the room, and where the, there's a, a bathroom there, that used to be the pantry. So it's very weird. Yeah, um, like there's no hallways. There's no hallways in that yeah. house. You can't Who took the picture of this one in the parlor? Me. I took that. Um, See, now, can I ask you a question, Nick? To the, to the right. If you, if you stand back to the right, outside the circle, outside the blue circle, you see the like the, the, the table right there with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you look up and behind it, there's like a, a white kind of lacy curtain or mm -hmm. tablecloth or something. Yeah. Above that, I see a woman in a, a black dress. So that, is that a photograph? Is that a photograph or is that? So the photo book. 
So you can see where the red, there's a red um, couch. And then there's a small little camping chair. There's a little yeah. in that chair, but what you're seeing. No, I, I know that. I know that, but I, I'm trying to see, I'm but asking what, you. What she's yeah. seeing outside the circle, outside yeah. the circle where I just directed you above that white. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a little table there and then you have the white thing behind it. If you look right above it, there is a woman there. Is that a photograph or is there, am I seeing yeah. something? There? Actually, what you are seeing is, I don't remember what, it, what it's called exactly, but it's Victorian and you would hold it. It's a wooden photo. It's you, you, where to look at pictures. So you put a picture in, and there's two binoculars, and you would hold them, and you would kind of look. Oh, through. okay. I know what you're talking about. So that's. I, I actually see the figure, a figure of a woman, and that's why I'm asking if it's a yeah. photograph or not. It sits up on a on a very strange angle. Uh huh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like the. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. And you you yeah. hold it, but you can put photographs in, or you can put, you know, reading, you know, you know scriptures, and you can just you hold it out like this and you read it. That's what you're exactly. seeing. But I wasn't sure if I was seeing another spirit that you guys missed or not, because I see the one in the chair that you have circled, but no, I thought me, it was, might be another one, and I wasn't sure if I was seeing it or not. I think it is Emma again. Um, uh, me and Emma don't like. She don't like me. Emma doesn't. She was very. Um, just mean. I'm just very, and she's just a mean older sister. She's mean yeah, really. Spirit. Um, but I don't know what that is. But to me, it's a woman that has her hands behind the camping chair, and she, Emma. To me, it looks like she's just in a blue gown, and her hair, mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, just a little bob, maybe in a bonnet. Um, could be Abby as well. I'm not sure, but. I definitely know that I was not alone in that house that night. You're mm. never alone in that house. Even when you want to be, even when you want to think that you're alone, you're never alone. Yeah, this is very true. <laughs> this yeah. is very true. Lizzie, she, well, she pops in and out. It's, it's, it's cool that you have this personal connection to the Lizzie Borden house and, and you've gotten to know the people that were there. But you also went to the SK Pierce Victorian haunted mansion, which was a scary, I think, experience for you guys. It was known as the um, Sylvester K. Pierce House or just the Victorian haunted mansion PC credit to the SK Pierce website. Even this picture is creepy in a way. It's built in the 1880s by Sylvester Pierce, who was a wealthy furniture company owner who decided to build a house befitting a man of his public stature. So he designed this 7,000 square foot daunting monstrosity that had 10 bedrooms. The mansion has a history filled with death and possible murder and no doubt has a background of paranormal activity. And you, one of you ladies, had an experience where you have a bite to your body from oh. that evening. That's Chris can put that up, but tell us what happened. So the the bite, and that was Penhurst, actually. Was that Penhurst or was it the SK Pierce? I thought it was the Pierce no, house. Okay, it was Penhurst. Um, the it's yeah, the night, but, um, we got we got the whole yeah. So thing. earlier when we were talking about the box screaming, that was the same mm -hmm. thing about the bite on my thigh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the bite. What happened with the bite at Penhurst, and then tell us the scary stuff that happened at Pierce. Oh, sure. Um. So we were in May. This was before the we got to the Devon building and the box screaming thing. Um. We were in the Mayflower third floor. Um, which, I mean, there were patients there who fit and they would remove their teeth. It's really sad that they would do that, but they, they did it because it would repeatedly happen and they didn't have room for people's safety. Yeah. So, um, safety. uh, Mayflower building, um, you know, obviously had biters in it. Anyway, we're on the third floor. I'm standing there in the one day room. We're hearing stuff going on out outside um and i remember i was wearing jeans that night and i was feeling like this burning sensation on my inner thigh and i kept like yeah and i kept like like rubbing it or what i'm like what in the world is like burning you know it just burned it slashed itched whatever it finally calmed down i didn't think anything of it until i got home that night and when i got changed that's when i discovered that um, and I know that a lot of people will say um, when they've been bit or scratched or what have you, like 
you feel a burning yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was exactly what I was experiencing. And again, never believed any of this until it happens to you. So like, what are the odds that I'm feeling a, a burning sensation in that night? I got that. I assure you it wasn't there when I went into that night. Mm. I've never bruised like that ever mm. before mm. since. And that photo was taken, what, two years two ago? Years ago yeah, I have um, never, yeah. I assure you, you know, you get your random bruises, nothing like that, ever like that. Mm. I have anemia. I don't have anything like that. Like, I have no idea, something. but it, it was burning in that same exact area. Well, it's good that you took the picture to document it, though, because oh, you know, like, what in the world? Like, should I be concerned yeah, about this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, no. It's like a bite of me. Never. <laughs> no. So what happened at the Pierce house? So that was interesting. I think we have a photo of um, a little girl grabbing a red pod. Yeah, that was, that was cool. No, I said it. Yeah, I think yeah. I did. Sure. It should be like a blue room, and then there's like a doorway, and you see the REM pod. Um, I know. Is it the triptych one? I think it's. Yeah, there's yeah. like there's three like, photos. There's three photos. So we're sitting in the room that's the billiard room where I think a lot of bad things happened. Yeah. Um, and we were just. Do you have that posted on your? Do you have that posted on your page where people can go and look at that picture? Because I, I don't think I took that picture. Yeah. Actually. yeah. Um. But that one we had. Yeah. So Nick was taking photos. And he goes, I'm, um, Rachel, I'm going to take a photo of you. Rachel's this like three year old girl. Mm -hmm. And he kept seeing her peeking in the room. And that mm -hmm. was the only time I think I've ever seen a full body go by Thank where I body. saw a little Order. thing just yeah. go by. Um, you can put it up on the screen. Maybe we could see it. I don't know if you want to try. He, um, anyway, Nick said, Rachel, I'm going to take a photo of you. Um, three, two, one. Yeah, no, I think it's working. Two, yeah. th he took That's okay. And we'll the, direct them to, to find you. Yeah. I and, can share it to my, I'll share it to the Instagram story so they can easily just click on the link. But in okay. the photo, you see like this white thing you see, grabbing. You see yeah. a hand, like you can see the definition in the fingers. Yeah. Grabbing. It's, it was wild. Even Marion, who works there, she, yeah. I mean, to this day, you mentioned that. I was amazed. Yeah. That's very cool. It will tell everybody how they can find you because I want them to be able to find you and follow you and if they want to see that picture or any of the other things we weren't able to show you tonight. We're on Instagram at Experiment Paranormal, one word. And then our Facebook is the same thing, Experiment Paranormal one. Well, uh, number one. And what are we, TikTok? We're TikTok. TikTok. It's just Experiment, Experiment Paranormal. Paranormal. Yeah. So it's Experiment Paranormal for TikTok, Experiment Paranormal one for Instagram. Uh, for Facebook. Facebook. And then Instagram is Experiment Paranormal. What's on your agenda for the months ahead? Um, well, I'm in grad school, so I'm going to be busy for yeah, a while. Yeah. But we are looking at um, these spring springs spring. for March during my spring break. Um, and I want to say we want to do something over Thanksgiving. Like we Gettysburg. Yeah. Yeah. Gettysburg. We were wanting to get to Gettysburg. That's yeah. yeah. I've been. Oh, Gettysburg is great. <laughs> I love it there. Yeah. I mean, I've been there, but not for anything paranormal, you know. But right. love to. To do an investment yeah. there. Especially a, a night walk. <gasps> Very cool. Well, guys, it was so nice to have you on. I'm so glad that you joined me and you brought such really great stuff. I'd love to have you on again sometime. Oh, Absolutely. we would love that. Yeah, we would love that. Thanks so much for having us. This was great. Thank you. And it was really lovely to meet you, you all. Well, Thank you. Maybe we can investigate with you sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. Yes, yeah. let's let's do something. Well, let's work it out. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Perfect. And thank you, Techie Chris. We couldn't do it without you. If you like listening to this week's episode and you're into all things paranormal, check out my other show, Eleanor Wagner's Strange and Scary World podcast out of the Paranormal UK radio network, which is available wherever you get your podcasts. You can watch and listen to the uncut version directly through my Eleanor Wagner YouTube channel. And if any of you are interested in reading any of my books, you can find them on Amazon. But you can get signed copies directly through me at author Eleanor, Eleanor Wagner at gmail.com. I write about the history of the town and location, add the paranormal story to the mix, and finish it all off with photos and evidence. 
And I'm excited to share that I have t-shirts available from both my Creepin' It Real podcast and Strange and Scary World podcast. Anyone interested in getting one, just email me at authoreleanorwagner at gmail.com. Lastly, viewers, tune in on Thursday, October 12th at 8 p.m. when Rick from ERC, Extraterrestrial Research Center, and musician Mark Easy come on the show to discuss aliens. Thank you and good night. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey down my own personal nightmare alley. If you're one of those people who experiences the paranormal and has stories of your own you've been filing away over the years, I want to hear about them. And if you're a part of a paranormal investigative team, even better. I'd love to have you on my show. Got a questionable photo? Send it in. Would love to have an open discussion here amongst the professionals. Reach out to me at author Eleanor Wagner at gmail.com. Enjoy our soundtrack music, Headless Horseman by Alexander Nakarada, promoted by freestockmusic.com. And remember, no ghost story is better than a real life ghost story. Until we meet again, make sure you're creeping it real.